when you hear somebody talking about range anxiety, most of the time they're referring to that very natural fear of being stranded after running your electric vehicle's battery down to zero. These aren't like gas cars. You can't just get a small can of gas and top off on the side of the road. In an electric vehicle with a fully depleted battery, if you don't have access to charging, you need to be towed. <laughs> that is understandably anxiety inducing. It's not only extremely time consuming, but it's expensive and you run the risk of damaging your car. What most people fail to recognize is that gas cars produce range anxiety all the time. Sure, on a road trip, you could plan your stops around topping off your gas tank so that you never run out. But it's not a road trip that gives a gas car a problem. It's the accumulation of short trips around your home over the course of several days that causes you to fill up at inconvenient times, often to the point of creating range anxiety. Every time your fuel light comes on, every time you either think or even say out loud, if I don't stop for gas, I'm not gonna make it. That's range anxiety in your gas car. Even when you aren't cutting it close with a gas car, you still have to plan around hitting a gas station every few hundred miles. And that is never convenient when you need to be getting to work or picking up the kids from school or running errands around your home. Then you have to deal with the fumes while pumping your gas, getting gas on your hands, on the bottom of your shoes, or even on your clothes. You bring that into the car with you and wherever you go from there. With an electric vehicle, you just plug in when you park and unplug when you leave. You can pull out of your garage every day with a full battery. If you want to, oftentimes you can even top off at work or at the mall. And many times you actually get the best parking spots because it's simply cheaper to put charge points nearest the electric service for the property. And that's generally close to the main buildings that the parking lot serves. Even with all the charging options available to me here in Raleigh, I can leave my house with up to 310 miles of range every morning. So I never actually worry about charging during the day. If I do plug in somewhere, it's for the free juice and not out of any need to increase my remaining range. I never worry about range with my Model 3, ever. I don't even plan out my charges. I just do all the driving that I need to do and plug in when I pull into the garage for the last time each day. I don't even start charging until 8.30 because I'm on a time of use rate to save even more money. I do get where the range anxiety concerns come from though. Many people's understanding of electric vehicles is shaped by memories of Ed Beagley Jr. and his all-electric Toyota RAV4. It took 18 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour and it had a top speed of 78 miles per hour with a range of only 95 miles. Or maybe you knew somebody with an electric vehicle. The original Nissan Leaf had a meager 73 miles of range. It became wildly popular despite that with over 400,000 of them on the road today. So if you knew somebody with a fully electric car that wasn't a Tesla, it probably was a Nissan Leaf. With its range that's less than a quarter of this Model 3. You may have heard or even seen the challenges that they went through just so they could make it through their day. They often depended upon charge points being available to them where they were, where they shop. Oftentimes they had to sit somewhere a lot longer than they wanted to just to get enough range to make it to their next errand or to make it safely home. That's a big reason why hybrids that made an electric drivetrain and a gas power drivetrain outsold pure electric vehicles for as long as they've been available. With a hybrid, you could always fall back on the gas tank to get you wherever you needed to go. The days of the hybrid's reign are over. The Chevy Bolt has a 238 mile range. The Tesla Model 3 offers up to a 325 mile range, matching that of the Model X. The Model S has a 370 mile range, which is more range than I get with a full tank of gas in my SUV. Even the newest Leaf is available with a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack offering 226 miles of range. Let's imagine for a moment that we're only doing the driving that we do on a daily basis, saving road trips and the like for later in the video. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the average person drives 13,476 miles per year. Even if you just break that over the work week, including vacations, that's still only an average of 67 miles per day. Let's flip it another way, using the lowest range battery that Tesla offers, which is in the standard range Model 3. If you charge at home, you'll wake up each morning to up to 220 miles of range. That's a total available range of 80,300 miles a year 
without having to stop during your day to add range even once. My dual motor Model 3 has the long range battery, so I wake up each day with up to 310 miles of available range. That's 113,150 miles of available range over the course of the year without me having to stop even once to add range so I can make it through my average day. Now let's look at what that means for a popular gas car. A Toyota Camry L with the fuel sipping 2.5 liter four cylinder has a combined mileage of 34 miles per gallon. That gives its 14 and a half gallon gas tank an average range of 493 miles. Even if you ran your tank empty every single time and managed to coast in for a fill up, that's still 27 times every year that you're stopping for gas sometime in the middle of your day. Of course, that's impossible to time that way. So the actual number is gonna be way higher than that. Think about all the time you spend at the pump with the gas car you drive right now. Think about all the times you left early to get gas so that you can make it to where you needed to go. Think about all the times you stopped for gas on your way home instead of getting back to your family. Think about all the times you ended up smelling like a gas station and all the inconveniences that came along with that. All of that goes away with a modern electric vehicle like a Tesla. Sure, some of us do drive more than a couple hundred miles a day on a regular basis, but most of us don't. Most of our driving looks exactly like what I just described. Yes, there are way more public chargers available to us for increasing our range when we need to than were available to Ed Beagley Jr. and his electric RAV4. But the simple fact is, we don't need to do that anymore. All of those public chargers you can find on a site like PlugShare.com are only necessary for people who don't have the option to charge at home, whether it's because you live in an apartment or you're out of town. For the rest of us, they aren't really needed any longer. We just don't need more range to get through our day than what we had when we left the the house. Yes, it's absolutely true that if you're going to drive more than a couple hundred miles in a single day, you might be inconvenienced more with an electric vehicle than a gas vehicle. Anyone who denies that is being irrational. The opportunities for getting a fast charge while on the road are an order of magnitude fewer than opportunities for getting gas, and fast charge is a relative term. It will probably take you longer to pull off a highway, get to a supercharger, get the charge you need, and get back on the highway than it will for you to get gas. But that extra time keeps dropping. With the Model 3's latest software update, you can now add about 100 miles of range at any Tesla supercharger in about 10 minutes. 150 miles comes in under 20 minutes. Even an 80% charge is achievable in the time it will take to eat lunch. That makes anything within 500 miles reachable in one short stop at a supercharger. But think about the driving that you do most. Is it long trips where you might be driving from supercharger to supercharger? Or is it a bunch of short trips throughout the day that never add up to the 200 to 300 miles the newest electric vehicles have for a range? If your driving is like mine, which is like that of most people in the US, you will have less range anxiety driving something like a Tesla than a gas car, no matter what mileage it gets. Sure, you might be inconvenienced a couple times per year having to stop at superchargers, but the entire rest of the year, you will never be inconvenienced with having to stop for gas. Range anxiety is a very understandable concern to be raised by someone considering electric vehicles. It's an important question to ask, but the answer is unless you're driving regularly beyond the range of whatever electric vehicle you're going to buy, you will have less range anxiety with an electric vehicle than with any gas vehicle you've ever owned. Best of all, the time you save all year long charging at home instead of stopping for gas will more than make up for the extra time you might spend charging on a road trip. For most drivers, it makes no no sense to accept the inconvenience of having to hit gas stations to fuel your daily driving just so you don't have to hit superchargers when you road trip. Oh, and hybrids don't solve this problem. They have gas tanks for a reason. It's because they burn gas in order to hit their quoted range, and keeping them fueled to use that range will require you to hit a gas station, just like the owner of this Chevy Volt. His timing was certainly convenient for me in my video, but who knows what he'd rather be doing than pulling up to a pump behind me. Yes, even hybrids create range anxiety. If you want freedom from range anxiety's grip on your daily schedule, if you want the side benefit of never smelling like gas again, charging a modern fully electric vehicle at home is the only solution. If you're thinking about getting the convenience of a Tesla for yourself, 
They have a really cool referral program that'll get you free supercharging. I've got my referral link in the video description as well as pinned in the comments where you'll be able to find all of the details. Be sure to subscribe so you can see other videos dispelling common electric vehicle myths. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech and I hope to see you next time.